Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the San Diego Comic-Con 2017 exclusive TMNT set from NECA. Now, after last year, people probably figured there's no way NECA is going to be able to top what they did. Multiple $100 packs with four figures in each. It's just fantastic. What could they possibly do? Well, they doubled it. <laughs> they gave us an eight-pack, essentially, for twice the price, which... I'm fine with this is easily worth the money. I want to put that out there right now. I know a lot of people see have sticker shock when they're looking at things like this. You're getting definitely your money's worth on this set. Despite the fact that a lot of the parts are reused, that's standard for the industry anyways. This is easily worth the money. Now obviously there's too much here for us to go through the whole uh, display stand rotation thing in the beginning with the packaging. So we're going to dive into it by talking about the packaging first. So this pack came in a vinyl throwback case which has two little latches on the side and some really cool artwork on the front and the back. And then you can open that up and that's where you're going to keep your figures in the particularly nice matte black blister. I'm very pleased with that. I like how they did that. Uh, you usually get a really crappy, cheap blister type of thing inside things like this, and they didn't, so that's really nice. The only gripe I have is I do wish this case opened up kind of like a book, so you had the turtles on one side and then the foot on the other side, rather than having them stacked on top of each other. Uh, I'm guessing there was some reason why they did that, and it's not obviously a big deal, but it is something worth mentioning, because it, it would have been cool to display them like that is all I'm thinking. Okay, so let's talk about the figures. There's lots to talk about here, so let's start by talking about the accessories. Now, all of the hands on the turtles are going to be interchangeable across the turtles, and they'll all be able to use the various accessories, but they were packaged as such. So Leonardo comes with, obviously, the two gripping hands, two flat open hands, the open communicator, and his two katanas. Michelangelo comes with his two gripping hands, two thumbs-up hands, two sets of nunchucks with actual chains, one grappling hook with an actual rope, and the grappling hook does have a little bit of a hinge mechanism in there for the two grappling parts. The closed communicator, and then the spinning nunchuck accessory. Raphael comes with his two gripping hands, his two side gripping hands, and his two sides, and the open communicator. Donatello comes with his two standard gripping hands, two pointing finger hands, his staff, and then the closed communicator. And then lastly for the turtles, we have the... Uh, pizza, which is done very nicely. I love the way that looks. They did a great job capturing the aesthetic. And then we have one removed slice that looks like it's all stretched out from the cheese, and it does have a hole in it for Raphael's sigh if you want to do that. So very nice accessories all around for the turtles. As for the foot, uh, I'm going to count Krang's walker. I don't remember the names of these things, guys. I'm sorry. The walker thingy as an accessory. We're going to talk about it more as we get into the review, but we do have that. We do have his little tripod, so that's really cool. And then we have one canister of ooze, and we have Krang's communicator, which is actually Shredder, but Krang is the one that's on it. So for Shredder, we have the two fist hands, two gripping hands, and two style pose hands, and then a katana, which is very nice. And then for the two foot soldiers, which are essentially identical figures, we have two fist hands for each, two gripping hands for each, and then two flat palm hands for each. We also have three different weapons. We have one handheld blaster, single-handed blaster, which is done very nicely. The comic aesthetic or cartoon aesthetic on these things is just fantastic. I love the way they did it. We do have one extra long rifle with that plunger type thing on the end, and then one somewhat more realistic looking rifle, which is just, they all look so very nice. So plenty of accessories for all of these figures. Now it's worth mentioning that all of the turtles are the same, except Except for their headbands. I do believe the headbands are all unique and of course their belts are all unique and Leonardo has an open mouth. They have slightly different heads. They're all pretty much the same but you'll see in the photos at the end specifically. I'm not going to show you every little detail on each figure because they're all essentially the same. Same thing for these guys. I'll show you one of them and I'll show you one of Shredder and then of course we'll talk about Krang. So let's go ahead and do all of that. We're going to start off by looking at the turtles, and then for the turtles, I'm just going to use Leonardo. Like I said, the bodies are all essentially the same, and you'll see the various tiny differences throughout the headbands and the faces in the photos at the end. So these guys stand just about 14 and a half centimeters, maybe just a tiny bit shy of that, which makes them just about five and five eighths. So pretty much the same size as before. I mean, they're essentially the exact same figures as before, so not pretty much. And that's appropriate scaling for 112 scale. They're not supposed to be that tall. 
And as you saw when they were standing up in the beginning, the foot and shredder are taller than them, and that's how it's supposed to be. Now, as far as the paint job goes on these guys, they are in the darker green, which is show accurate. I've heard some people say different parts of the show have different color schemes, and I'm sure that's true, but I remember them being this color pretty much forever. So I'm very happy that we have the darker green. Now, in terms of shading, we don't have that pixelation like we saw last year. We have your standard green, and then we have panels kind of of the darker green going along the back side of the arms, the back, the legs and feet. The hands have a little bit on the palm. You can see that in there. And then the heads have just a little bit on the very back of the head. The shells are all standard kind of tan with dark brown. No real shading on there per se, but it's nicely detailed. Same thing for the belt. The belt's a good example of the really heavy like line art type shading, which we do have throughout the figure as well, in addition to the different color blocks. So that's pretty cool. All of the turtles have different shades, obviously, for their respective bandanas and their arm pads and things like that. So we have the light blue up front, then the dark blue in the back for Leo, and that's true for the headband, the elbow, the wrist, and the knee. And it looks very nice. I like that aesthetic. I didn't, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it when before I had them in hand, but I'm very pleased with how it looks. And then the L and or whatever letter it is has nice heavy black shading around it. And same thing is true for the chest panels, nice dark black line. And there even is a little bit of brown shading on either side. Not really shading, it's more of a color block, but it looks very nice. And I just love the way the white is lined by the dark black, obviously dark, but heavy black for the mouth and pretty much everything is lined in that heavy black. So it looks really, really good. The eyes on Leo are painted very squarely, so I'm very happy about that. A couple of my other turtles not quite so squared up. They're a little googly eyed. So uh, hopefully you guys don't have that problem as much. Um, I bought two of these, one for me and one for my brother. And the one I gave my brother, the figures were almost perfect. And then of course the one I kept for myself, which I did randomly, Mine are googly, so, you know, I have the worst luck in the world, but that's okay. So as far as the articulation on these guys go, we've seen this before, but we're going to run through it again, and hopefully I cover everything, because it's kind of well hidden on this guy. It's not readily apparent, which is a good thing. The head, I believe, is on a double ball peg, but it could essentially be a single, but you do get really good range. Ooh, before I start, I want to point out, a lot of the joints on these guys and Shredder and the foot are going to be stuck. It, it seems to be a common issue, so be very careful when posing these guys. You may want to hit them with a hairdryer. You may want to put them in the freezer. There are lots of options. I'm not going to suggest any one of them because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, and I don't want to be the reason for any breakage, so handle them at your own risk and just be very, very careful. So double ball peg, maybe single ball peg for the head. You can lean it side to side. It leans very nicely. Full rotation, of course. It can look up a little bit, not that much, and then of course it can look down pretty well. The neck is also on a ball peg. It's mostly just going to be for rotation, and I can't really even get it to work, so I mean, the head's going to handle it, so that's fine either way. The shell is a soft plastic on the front, so it shouldn't get in the way of the shoulders too much. You do have your standard ball hinge for the shoulder. It's very stiff on this guy. Hopefully we don't break anything. I can't get it up any farther than that. So, pretty limited. I'm guessing it's supposed to go farther, but it doesn't really want to. Let's see. This side, yeah, this side works perfectly. So, assuming you can get it to free up, you have your fully horizontal shoulder. So, that's fine. No problems there. Bicep swivel works just fine. The rotation for the arm works just fine. Be careful, though, as you're rubbing it across this. You don't want to rub off any paint. So, just use a little bit of caution, but it will flex, so that's good. You have your single jointed elbow, which gives you pretty much 90. It's just shy of 90 degrees. And you do also have a secondary swivel in there, which will help for posability. The elbow pad or elbow wrap is a soft plastic, so it won't really impede anything. And it just kind of hides the joint. So that's pretty good. For the wrists, we have... Let's pull it off and see. It should be a hinge, but I didn't check. Yes. So we have your standard vertical hinge on this hand which is really good anybody that uses a sword should have a vertical hinge that's always ideal so he does have that so the hands do have varying hinges in them so that's going to be pretty cool as for the torso we have a ball peg that holds the lower torso to the upper torso so you can kind of lean them side to side you're going to be able to rotate them though mine's very stiff i can't really get it to work you're going to be able to move them forward and back just a little bit Otherwise, you have your standard T-jointed ball hinge hips, which give you really, really good range out to the side. Pretty much full-on splits, so that is no problem at all. That's really, really good. Now, unfortunately, going forward and back, you have good range, but the hips are connected, essentially, and they're fairly floppy. So that's definitely a drawback. Be aware of that. 
Bringing the legs forward though, no problem at all. The shell is flexible and you get really good range. You do have a thigh swivel in there for either leg like your standard ball hinge would have. Some of them are stuck very, very tight and some of them move freely, so be careful with that. For the knees, you have your standard doubled hinge knee, double jointed knee, which gives you really good range. And the soft uh, knee pad thing there really doesn't get in the way too much. You get pretty good range and I am happy with that. And then lastly, we have our ball peg for the ankles, which isn't really ideal. It looks nice, but it doesn't give you the best range. You get a little bit forward and back, not a bunch. And of course you get rotation, but that's not that useful. And then you get just the tiniest, tiniest ankle rocker. So these guys are not the most uh, groundbreaking in terms of articulation, but they definitely get the job done for what they're supposed to do. They, they look like they're supposed to, they're very aesthetically ple pleasing, and they are technically fully articulated, so with a little bit of creativity, you should be just fine posing these guys. So I'm very happy with the turtles overall. The next thing I wanna talk about is Krang. He's essentially just a giant plug of plastic, which is nicely painted. We have the light pink, we have some dark pink shading, then we have some black and like a brownish pink on top of that, so it looks very cool. There's some more of that color down there. The face is painted very cleanly, so I like that. And his arms are articulated. And the cool thing about them is they pop off. They're supposed to, you can see the double ball peg, so you can move them around while they're on his body. But you can pop them off and use his walker. So the walker, let's talk about that briefly. It has the hinge cockpit up here, which is really nice. It's nice clear plastic, very reminiscent of the old toys. Really cool kind of cell shading paint job throughout, very nicely sculpted. We do have a swivel, not really a hinge, a swivel or I guess a pivot, whatever you want to call it right there. Same thing right here. Problem is, I'm pretty sure, now I could be wrong, but if memory serves, this should be hinged also so that the legs can be reverse hinged and these can be flat. Because now the only way to make them flat will not allow it to stand up. So it'll, it'll fall forward or you have to keep them straight. So I'm not positive on that. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure these should have a hinge in them as well. Uh, you do get a swivel down there. I'm not sure how useful that is or if it's really intentional. This one swivels pretty easily. This one doesn't. So do that at your own risk. But very, very nice looking piece. And if you want to just have them standing like this, you'll be fine. So no big deal there. So anyway, the cockpit can open and then you can put him inside, which is what you want to do probably, and then those pieces right there kind of hide his little arm sockets, so you can do that, and then you can take his little tentacles and put them in here, which gives you your proper crang, which I just love. I'm glad that they did this. I don't think I have that one pegged in all the way, but either way, you get the idea. I'm very, very pleased with that. It looks fantastic. Inside his, of his walker, Krang is going to measure just about 11 and a half centimeters, a little bit shy of that, which makes him just about four and a half inches. And if you really want to know how tall Krang is on his own, we don't really need his arms for that. We can go ahead and just measure him at about one and a half inches. So definitely rather small, but appropriately sized. And then if you aren't pleased with that, you do get his little tripod, which just kind of kind of pegs into his underside, which works nicely. So he can stand on that like you saw in the very beginning of the video. So Krang is very successful, other than maybe needing an extra hinge for his walker. I'm not sure about that though. So you guys can, you guys can decide on that on your own and correct me if I'm wrong. So let's set Krang aside and look at Shredder. Now I am going to talk about Shredder depend independently from the foot because he is a different figure, though they share some parts, just a few. It is mostly a unique figure, and it is different than the other Shredder that we got a little while ago. So Shredder stands just about six and yeah, maybe six and five eighths inches, right around there. So he definitely has some size over the turtles, and that's cool. 17 centimeters tall. Very aesthetically pleasing. We have the lighter gray on the front here. There's a dark gray paneling in there with those heavy black lines for the shading. The pants are all black. They're solid black. Same thing with the feet. And then the shin pads have some gray with like a light blue and then the white and black lining. Same thing for the forearms and the shoulder pads and the head. Very, very nicely done. It has a very nice cell shaded look. And I just, I love the aesthetics. NECA is doing a good job bringing the aesthetics. And he has a cloth cape, which is nice. It's very reminiscent of the Soda M Bison cape, which is probably my favorite 112 scale cloth cape. And this is just like that. 
It does have a little bit of a, a pinching thing going on, which is intentional. So it hangs nicely and fits around the neck properly, and that's really cool. And they did a really good job with the eyes on this guy. It just looks fantastic. Very, very pleased with this guy. Shoulder pads are soft like before, so they won't get in the way of the articulation. Uh, well, let's start with the head. I guess, I guess that would be appropriate. Getting ahead of myself. Get it? A head? Okay. So the head is on, I believe it's on a hinged ball peg if I remember correctly, but I don't want to pull on it to find out. But either way, I'll show you how functional it is. You can rotate it from side to side. You can not lean it back very far at all, but it can lean down, which is fine since the turtles are shorter anyway. And you can lean it from side to side too. It might be on a double ball peg. Honestly, I can't remember, but either way, it's functional and it's really nicely done. Just want to point out the black line work on these guys it's really clean for the most part even when it's not perfectly clean it still looks really good so very pleased with that so now back to the shoulders full swivel full rotation all the way around no problem they are very tight but if you're careful you should be able to get them up to just about horizontal so no real issues there and since these guys are soft and floaty you won't really have too many problems with that you have your bicep swivel which is stuck on this guy let's see if it'll free up and eh, that's risky let's try this side yeah that side worked so you kind of probably heard well you probably didn't hear it either way they'll kind of pop free right away or you're gonna have to be very careful because it could tear that plastic so bicep swivel works just fine once it's free then you have a double jointed elbow which is also stuck a lot of stuck joints on these guys it's pretty disappointing because I don't want to risk ruining my $200 pack of figures that are pretty much impossible to replace. So that's a 90 degree bend with one joint. The other joint's supposed to work, but mine's stuck, so I'm not going to risk it. You'll get better than 90 if you use both. So this guy does not have the forearm swivel. I thought the other shredder did. Maybe he didn't. I don't remember. But this guy has no forearm swivel, so the forearm pieces are going to be in place all the time, which I'm okay with. It is a soft plastic, and it won't get in the way of anything. Not that there's really much for it to get in the way of. Way of. And then we have a swivel for the wrist and then a hinge, of course, so the wrists are fine. No diaphragm articulation at all, no ab crunch, just a waist twist. It is separate. This part down here is separate from the belt piece, so you should be able to rotate it, but mine is stuck. These are soft plastic, and this can actually rotate as well, so if you need to, you can do that, and it's split down the side. So for the hips, you should be able to pose them no problem. Yeah, full-on splits, no problem at all with that, so that's really good. And then bringing the leg forward, it is a little bit floppy again. Not quite as bad as the turtles, but it's not great. But you can bring it forward, really no problem at all. And you get really good range out of that, so that's pretty fantastic. There is a thigh swivel right underneath the ball hinge. So uh, I did have to break these free. And in fact, I couldn't get this one to break free, so be very careful with that. But there is a thigh swivel there. It works just fine. Double jointed knees work really well. Very nicely done. We have a shin swivel hidden behind the shin armor, so that's good. Then we have a ball peg for the ankles, which give you a little bit of range forward, a little bit of range going back, and then, of course, rotation if you want, a little bit of an ankle rocker, and a toe hinge, which is actually a really nice toe hinge. So Shredder's pretty good. You're just going to have to really be careful with stuck joints and posing him because you don't want to break it. But be very careful, and you should be okay. And the last thing to talk about is the foot soldier, of which we get two, and they are identical figures. So this guy is similar to Shredder, some of the same body parts, and similar type of paint. All of the black is just solid black. His forearm pieces are just this whitish gray color with the black lining, no blue on them. And then his purple has just the standard purple on the front, and then a darker purple on the back. That's true for every part of purple on him. He does have a little bit of black line work up here on the... Uh, shoulder area and on the face none on the legs and I have to say I really like the way they did the face it, it looks exactly the way it's supposed to but the paint job for the little foot and then the yellow eyes with the black line on there very very nicely done they even added these guys in here for the sculpt these little straps which don't actually serve a purpose other than looking the way they're supposed to look so I think that's pretty cool now as far as the articulation goes the head is on a double ball peg so it can look up really far it can look down, not so far, and then it leans side to side in full rotation, so it moves really well. Probably the best articulation for the head out of any of the figures. The shoulders are essentially the same as Shredder, so they're a ball hinge with full rotation other than where this piece is in the way, and that is solid plastic, so that's not going to flex too much. You're going to have some trouble raising the arms. If they're stuck, which mine are very stuck, 
Uh, technically, there's clearance for them to go all the way up. If you can get it to work, you'll be able to bring them out horizontally, but uh, I can't get mine to work. You do have a bicep swivel, but that one is stuck, and this one is not, so that's fine. Bicep swivel, swivel works fine if it'll actually work. Double jointed elbows, a little bit better than 90 degrees. Not a ton, but uh, if you do it just right, you can get pretty good range, so that's really nice. No forearm swivel on these guys, though the forearm pieces are flexible. And then, of course, you have your wrist swivel and hinge. No ab crunch or diaphragm joint, but you do get a, a waist twist. And then you have your soft, flexible belt as a separate piece. So just like Shredder, the hips can go all the way out to the side. No problem at all. Very nice. All the way forward. Again, no problem at all. They do have some looseness to them, but you should be able to be okay. Uh, you're going to find sweet spots where they're loose and sweet spots where they're tight. So just be aware of that. The thighs do have a swivel in them, just like your standard ball hinge right in there. Uh, this guy, I happen to be able to free them up. The other one, I could not, so be aware of that. The double jointed knee, just like Shredder again. These guys are mostly the same, mechanically speaking. Works very nicely, no problems there. He does have a shin swivel. And then we have our ball pegged ankle, which works, you know, well enough for a ball peg. Not too much of an ankle rocker, but it goes forward. Well, his isn't even that good. So it's pretty basic. It's very minimal. So a little bit forward and back and a little bit of an ankle rocker. Full rotation and a toe hinge. So like I said in the beginning, these guys are not groundbreaking in terms of articulation. They are definitely... What happened there? They are definitely good enough, but uh, these guys are really... You're going to be buying these guys for the aesthetics for the most part, and then the articulation is just a nice bonus, I think. And obviously, everybody wants them in this scale. So I'm, I'm very pleased with it. I think you guys will be too. They shouldn't really be that surprising to you if you purchased the previous NECA Turtles. These are essentially this, more of the same thing, which I am perfectly okay with. And I definitely recommend 100%. If you weren't able to get one in the pre-sale or at Comic-Con, you really should track them down. Uh, they're, they're a lot of fun to have, though they're not perfect. They're still really damn good. And any Turtles fan or any collector in general should really try to get them. So... There you go, guys. Make sure you stick around here for the photos at the end. There are going to be quite a few of them, so stick around for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you come back for that. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And in the meantime, keep collecting.